Sea of Thieves Season 11 released today and brings with it yet another host of changes to remove the friction of the gameplay loops in an attempt to keep players more engaged and encourage new players to try out the game. This comes off the back of Seasons 9 and 10 which largely aims to do that, with the world event balancing in the former and introducing safer seas in the latter. Season 11 aims to remove the sea in Sea of Thieves by adding a new fast travel mechanic. People will recognize this from the season eight hourglass, but now people can use this to travel to world events and rebalanced voyages. Yes, Rare has finally gotten around to making the voyages worthwhile. On top of that, most companies have had their reputation caps increased to 500. Yes, you heard me right, 500. So is it a smart addition to the game or does it fail to make an impact as a season? Let's find out. Kicking us off with the dives, this is essentially a way to kickstart your sessions. If you hated sailing in the pirate game, this will appeal to you tremendously. Rare have removed all the voyages from previous vendors in the game, and instead you can access any voyage you want via the captain's table, with a new menu to boot. This gives you complete control over what you want to do. The voyages are split into certain activities, like riddles versus X marks the spot maps, with the length and the location listed. Think of it as the captain voyage system, but free, not linked to captaincy, and easier to understand. The UI here is amazing, and I can tell Sprung Studios knows their shit. I think the UI is a massive step up to what we're used to. We even have an easy way to get to the Devil's Roar, so hopefully that'll revive it. When voting the quest down, you can choose to sail there or to dive, but it basically achieves the same outcome. Diving just pops you up at the Starty Island, but if you choose a multiple island voyage, you still have to sail in between them. As for diving, you can't dive if anyone is nearby, just like the hourglass. All loot is lost, the emissary flag remains, and there is a cooldown for diving, so it cannot be used to avoid PvP. It's essentially there to get you into the game as quick as possible. You can also use this new system to dive to any world events, aside from the Fort of the Damned and the Fort of Fortune, or the new Fleet of Fortune. We'll cover that shortly. Oh, and sea forts, shrines, and treasuries are in this category too. The world events are the exact same as we've seen before. They play the same and are balanced around the crew size, just like from the season nine changes. There is a slight difference, that if you dive to a world event, loot will be specifically the new loot for the trading companies based on which faction you dived with. For example, if you dive as a gold hoarder, all the loot will be for the gold hoarders. Naturally occurring world events still contain the same loot as before. It's really whether you want to specifically level up a faction versus doing all of them. The quests have been balanced so they're actually worth engaging in, which is a long, long, long time coming. The launch quests have outright been bad for years now, and it's going to be nice to have a reason to return to them. The diving system is also an option for Tall Tales, with it spitting you out in the starting area. As for the new activities, there are none aside from a reused Order of Souls voyage that allows you to fight one of the three skeleton lords as a bounty quest. If you're looking for something new to do, unfortunately you'll be doing the same things as season 10 or season 9. Season 11 really serves as a way to sample everything Sea of Thieves has to offer. I can't help think that this diving is just a means of stripping down the game further in order to keep the rotating door of Game Pass players in. I do think we've lost a little bit of what makes the game special and immersive for the sake of ease. I don't know, I liked having to speak to a representative to get a quest since it was much more like an adventure versus using a magic table to spawn them up. I was against some of season 9's changes when they came out for this reason, so it might be something I grow to like in the future. Another example is finding the merchant crates at the island when diving for an animal voyage. It defeats the roleplay aspect of being a merchant and shipping things, but the ships on the seas will probably have more loot. On the other hand, it probably discourages stacking since you can dive, get loot, sail, sell, repeat, and you can keep your emissary flag. We'll have to wait and see how this plays out. The other half of Season 11's content surrounds the increasing of levels for the trading companies. The Gold Hoarders, Order of Souls, Merchant Alliance, the Reaper's Bones, and Athena's Fortune have now been increased to level 100. Then you can earn a distinction and then reset it to level 1. This can be done up to 5 times, essentially meaning you can reach level 500 in each. Womp womp to the Hunter School fans as it remains untouched. Increasing these levels was really long overdue, since I've been maxing all my companies for years now. It may seem daunting to new players, but, well, you're not really missing out on any crazy rewards. Speaking of which, the rewards for leveling up companies are pretty underwhelming aside from one company. And this isn't the quality of the items, it's more so the quantity. 
The rewards are from levels 80, 85, 90, 95 and 100. 80 has a pennant with the company logo on as a trinket. These are pretty cool. 85 is another company themed trinket. 90 is a themed ship crest. These are amazing. 95 is a marketable plushie of the faction leader. Again, these are amazing. Level 100 is... <sighs> Unfortunately, Rare has gone back to the costumes as rewards for all three main trading companies and Athena's Fortune. They're really cool, but it's just disappointing to return to this. But hey, we've gone full circle. You can now buy actual clothing in the Emporium instead. But seriously, people are going to be disappointed by this. They should have been held so they could be converted into clothing. The Reaper's Bones, however, got off lightly, since they ended up with the best rewards. Four new skeleton cosmetics, which are unlocked at level 100, and they're the best yet. We get the Reaper mask, the Reaper headdress, robes, and trousers, all of which just go so hard and have convinced me to go full calcium. I think this fortune is a little bit different. They have an extra ship crest and trinket since they're only at level 30 instead of 75. And no, the veil mask is a trinket. It's not a new mask for that slot. Rings are the other reward and they work the same for each company. There's five variants. Essentially, they get upgraded each time, adding more rings to the hand. Each distinction rewards a new tier, which is awarded for finishing level 100. Rings can be worn on the left, right or both hands, but are overwritten by gloves, so you can't actually have them over your gloves. It's also worth noting that these are the only rewards after level 100, so when you finish your first distinction, levels 1 to 100 have nothing to earn. It's really nice to have more levels, but Rare is repeating the same mistakes as Hourglass, with not having any rewards that are worthwhile for most players after a certain point. I will go for these since I wasn't being rewarded before, but I can't see the casual fans being pleased with this. With that being said, the progression for each company has been rebalanced around the new level requirements, so it shouldn't be as daunting to complete. There's some new accommodations available too, some for selling the new Kingly loot, and the others for selling the new Voyage loot in the Build Rat tab. These unlock the Cartographer weapons. The trading companies also have similar new accommodations. As for the Chest of Fortune, this is now in the Skeleton Fleet. It's the same as before, just the final boss ship will have the chest, and the cloud is now red to let you know it's a fleet of fortune. I'm happy this is back, and is way better than the Fort of the Damned. I am sick to the back tee for the Fort of the Damned at this point. The gold stores also have new clothing, the Maestro clothing set. It's alright, but it is brand new. The new Plunder Pass and Season Pass are here, and both are a tiny little bit of a letdown. The Plunder Pass continues the new precedent set by Season 10, with a full ship set and clothing. It's good value, but the items just aren't my cup of tea. That's the tiny letdown for me. The season pass is still suffering from the same issues as it always has. There's too much gold and doubloons as before. Doubloons are less useful since the Pirate Legend voyages from Season 9 are free now, so if you have completed the old season passes, you really have nothing to spend doubloons on when the old items come back. The clothing set is clearly left over from the original Season 11 since it's Halloween themed despite it being very nice. To further hammer this home, Briggsy's gloves are in the past and would have matched the Skull of Siren Song releasing in the original Season 11. Belle's dress is the other pirate legend item, and it's awesome. It's long overdue, but has zero appeal to me since I look horrendous in a dress. My pirate, by the way, not in real life. My personal standout is the Froggy Lantern. He is so cool. But yeah, the season pass is good. We just need that endless tier and some more actual rewards in it. The Emporium got an update too, as usual. The new menu music is the best since Seabound Soul. Robin and Chloe absolutely exceed themselves every time they drop new music. And it's what you've been listening to throughout this segment. It's a 10 out of 10, perfect as usual. So here's the thing. Season 11 is a good update for the health of Sea of Thieves. If Rare are aiming to appeal to absolutely everyone and get more Game Pass installations. It's very clear the last year and a bit has been aimed at removing a bit of the jank, but conversely, it's also removed a lot of what makes Sea of Thieves immersive, but also annoying. If you asked me to imagine a new Sea of Thieves season as early as the end of 2022, I would never in a million years have envisioned this. At least not diving in the removal of voyages, extending the levels is absolutely something I would expect. Season 11 is the last new system slash quality of life update, and that's a good thing, with seasons going forwards being about adding brand new content. The game needs new things to do, not easier ways to do the things we are already doing in the game. Season 11 is a good update, but it sort of just came at the wrong time. If we had a buffer in between season 9, 10 and 11 of something like season 6 or season 8, then the story would be different. 
If you're looking for a brand new activity to draw you back in, this isn't it, but new bars to level up are great if you're already playing. If you don't have enough time to invest in the game, this update is for you. And it seems rare is chasing that player base who only have a small amount of time to play. It's good that the overall time needed to make progress in this game has been lowered. I will say though, I can't shake the feeling that we're an update or two from this game being an entirely different game to what was intended, with almost everything being far too optimised to the point of removing what makes the game unique. Maybe it's time to pump the brakes on that front. Of Season 11 is a great update to onboard new players, and it made a conscious effort to throw a bone to old players with the new distinctions, along with a great void revamp to make old content actually fun and rewarding. Rare have nailed the what and the why in that aspect. It's the best season since season 8 in my opinion, but I'm much more interested to see where we go in season 12. What that says about season 11 probably says a lot, despite this being enough to tie me over for another 3-4 to four months.